Hello and welcome to this presentation on Outlook integration with Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013. My name is David Mockray and I'm a CRM consultant with Adaptable Solutions in Auckland, New Zealand. Adaptable Solutions is a Microsoft partner and specialises in Microsoft AX, SL and CRM solutions. Now, Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 is a bit of a mouthful, so for brevity I'll just refer to it as CRM for the rest of this presentation. If Outlook integration with CRM is a new topic to you, I suggest you check out part one of this series. The link is on screen now. In that video, I cover the basics. In this video, we'll be looking at synchronization options between Outlook and CRM. In this demo, I'm using Outlook 2013 and CRM 2013, so if you're following along on your own system, it may look quite different if you have a different version of either product. This is particularly true for CRM as the user interface for 2013 has been totally redesigned. However, the broad principles of the functionality of the Outlook integration with CRM are the same for both CRM 2011 and 2013. If you're using CRM 4, this video won't give you a great deal of useful information. I mentioned in part 1 that you can set personal options for what emails get tracked in CRM. You set this by going into Outlook, selecting File, CRM, Options, and selecting the Email tab. You have the following options. You can set it so all emails get tracked. This would be unusual for most personal email boxes. Anyone who uses email knows that we get a lot of email that isn't really related to our core job. Plus, we often get personal emails mixed in with the work ones. You wouldn't really want to track them in CRM. However, this may be a good option for an email box which was set up to receive only customer support issues or sales requests entered via your website. Those inboxes would be less likely to receive personal or spam emails than a personal email box. The next option is to only track emails in response to emails already tracked. You do this by selecting the option Email Messages in Response to CRM Email. This is a very common option for CRM users. It means that only replies or forwarded emails where the original email was being tracked then also get tracked. You can also set CRM to automatically track any emails which come in from CRM contacts, leads or accounts. It tells this by comparing the email address of the sender with the email address of all contacts, leads and accounts in CRM. And the last option is similar to the third one where CRM only automatically tracks any emails which are from any email enabled entity in CRM. So, for example, if you were in, say, the education business and had a custom record type in CRM called schools, and that record type had an email address associated with it, if you got an email from that school, it would automatically track in CRM. Another option you can set CRM to do automatically is to create a contact or lead in CRM for every email that gets received. You do that by ticking that create box there and then selecting contacts or leads from the drop-down list. That would be quite unusual for a personal email box. Then, for example, if you receive an email from a friend or family member, that person is created in CRM as a contact. That's clearly not a good outcome. Again, this is probably best used where the email box is a very specific use, such as capturing emails from website queries sent in by potential customers. So far, we've looked at email integration with CRM. Of course, Outlook does a lot more than emails. You can have tasks, contacts and appointments in Outlook too. You can also set up CRM to synchronize these record types with Outlook. Let's take a look now at how that works. Before we go any further, a word of warning. The first time you open Outlook after installing CRM for Outlook, any contacts owned by you in CRM will sync to Outlook automatically. So if you own thousands of contacts in CRM, they'll all come to Outlook. To stop this happening, Select Start, select All Programs, select Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013, and Diagnostics. This Outlook synchronization option is like a master switch for synchronization between Outlook and CRM. Turn it off, save it. Now you can continue. Once you've set up all your synchronization options within Outlook, come back, Start, Diagnostics, and turn it back on and save. 
First of all, you get to decide what to synchronize. You may not want to synchronize everything in CRM with your Outlook. After all, some CRM systems have thousands or even millions of records in them. You probably wouldn't want all those records in your Outlook. For example, with contacts, you personally may only deal with a very small subset of the contacts in your CRM. You tell CRM what to sync to Outlook by using the built-in Outlook filters. These let you decide exactly what contacts, activities, that is, phone calls, appointments, tasks, etc., get copied from CRM to Outlook. Let's take a look at how that works. Let's look at contacts first. I access the Outlook filters on Outlook 2010 or later by going to File, CRM, Options, Synchronization, and selecting the Filters link. For earlier versions of Outlook, go to the CRM menu and select Options. Also, if you're using CRM 2011 rather than CRM 2013, that link I just clicked will be called Outlook Filters, not just Filters. This is because CRM 2013 has introduced other synchronization options. So for CRM 2013, these filters can apply to things other than Outlook. So this brings up the standard Outlook filters which come preloaded to CRM. There is one for contacts which is set to copy all active contacts which I own to Outlook. This is shown if I go into the Outlook filter for contacts. You can see here the two criteria that have to be met, being active and being owned by the current user, i.e. me, before CRM will synchronize those contacts to Outlook. If you've used CRM before, you will be familiar with the concept of record ownership. Many types of records in CRM must be assigned an owner. This would be the person that owns that relationship with that particular record, such as an account or client manager. You may also be familiar with this screen, which is the same as the advanced find screen in CRM. So as standard, any contacts owned by me in CRM will get copied to my Outlook contacts folder. However, I may want to get some other contacts from CRM to Outlook as well. Let's say I work closely with a colleague and want to copy all his contacts to my Outlook as well. I can set CRM to do that very easily. I simply add a new Outlook filter and set the criteria. Let's do that now. The easiest thing to do in this situation is to copy the existing filter from my active contacts and give it a new name. I'm going to be bringing in all active contacts owned by my colleague James Smith. So I just click Save As and I'll call it James's Outlook Contacts. Then I change the owner to equals James Smith. Then I save it and I close it. Now when I look at the list of filters you can see my existing one for all of my active contacts. And now I see the new one for all James's active contacts too. These filters work cumulatively, that is they each select a subset of data from the CRM then add that to data together and copy to my Outlook. Needless to say, if a record falls into two different filters, CRM doesn't bring it into Outlook twice. It only brings in unique records. It's worth noting at this point that I could have amended the existing filter to pick up both mine and James's contacts. However, I typically advise clients to leave the standard filters untouched and add new filters to handle any additional records to be synchronized. In my experience, it makes management of the filters easier in the long term. Of course, if you decided you wanted to have a more restrictive filter on the contacts coming from CRM to Outlook, you would have to either deactivate or delete the existing filter and then create a new one, or amend the standard filter. To deactivate a filter, just select it and click Deactivate, which is the red square. To delete, select the black cross. I typically recommend deactivation over deletion, as you can always activate it again if you change your mind. There's no way back from a deletion. One very useful application of contact syncing is bringing contacts from CRM to Outlook and then syncing them to your phone. This way you can have one contact record in CRM and all staff who have that contact on their phone get the most up-to-date details for that contact. A similar setup exists for appointments. You have an Outlook filter for appointments. One particular thing to note here is that the appointments you have in CRM where you fill any role other than the owner will be synchronized. You can see that there's a clause saying the participation type does not equal owner. For CRM appointments, you can be the organizer, an attendee, an optional attendee, etc. The full list can be seen here. 
If you wanted to amend this and bring in all appointments for which you are owner in CRM as well, you can either delete the clause which says you are not the owner, or you add a new filter and remove that clause. Other activity types such as tasks and phone calls etc all work the same way. However, one thing to note here is that there is no such thing as a phone call activity in Outlook. So, when it synchronizes into Outlook it will synchronize as a task. Let's see that at work. I have here a scheduled phone call in CRM to make to a customer on the 29th of May. If I now go to Outlook and sync with CRM, as you can see the phone call has come through into Outlook as a task. This works similarly for other types of CRM activities where there's no corresponding activity type in Outlook. Now it's very important to realize we're talking here about syncing CRM records to Outlook, not the other way around. Let me explain what I mean by that. When you load, say, a contact to CRM and that contact meets the criteria set by your filter to bring that record through to Outlook, the contact from CRM comes to Outlook automatically. Then any changes made to that contact in Outlook will also be made automatically to the contact in CRM and vice versa. But there is no way to automatically synchronize a contact, task or appointment created in Outlook with CRM. So if you have a contact in Outlook and you want that contact to appear in CRM, you have to manually track that contact to create the initial connection with CRM. Once you've done that, the synchronization process works as I've already described. That is, any changes in CRM reflect in Outlook and vice versa. So we've looked at what CRM syncs with Outlook. Let's turn our attention to when. There are two ways of synchronization between CRM and Outlook can be triggered, manual and automatic. By default, CRM is set to synchronize with Outlook every 15 minutes. The system administrator will set the minimum time period between synchronizations. For a user to set their own frequency of synchronization, in Outlook they go to File, CRM, Options and Synchronization. And down here it says schedule automatic synchronization with Outlook. So the user sets how often they synchronize here. As you can see, the minimum allowed is 15 minutes. And the user can't set it to be more frequent than that. But they can set it to be less frequent. Let's say they wanted to only do it every 30 minutes. They click OK. And it's done. Now there will be times when you don't want to wait until the next scheduled synchronization. So in Outlook, just go to CRM and click Synchronize with CRM. It's as easy as that. Another really useful thing to do in Outlook is to synchronize your address book with records in CRM. This allows you to then send an email to any CRM record directly from Outlook. To set this up, go to File, CRM, Options, Address Book. For Contacts, you have the ability to set whether you will only match to synchronized contacts or all contacts in CRM. I'm set up here to sync with all contacts in CRM. So if I close this and go into the address book in Outlook and I have a number of address books that I can select and one of those is called David Mockery Contacts. Now David Mockery is just the name of the CRM organization that I'm using. It's just a sandbox system set up for me alone you would typically have the name of your organization here and this contains all of the contacts in CRM for me to select to send an email to. If I go back into the synchronization options and I select to match only against contacts synchronized to Microsoft Dynamics CRM select OK and I go back to the address book now that David Mockery contact is no longer there because the only contacts who are matching with Outlook are the ones that I've actually got synchronized between Outlook and CRM, not every contact in CRM. I've also got the option of matching email addresses against other entities as well, for example, lead, account, etc. And that includes custom entities. As you can see here, I've got this custom entity called Schools that I've created in CRM, set as an email-enabled entity. And now I can synchronize the email addresses for those schools with my address book in Outlook. So I can send an email to any of those schools directly from Outlook without ever going into CRM. So that's it for a very quick tour of the basic synchronization options of Outlook with CRM 2013. 
There's a lot more to this topic, but that's a pretty good start. The same broad principles apply for CRM 2011 and CRM 2013, so if you're still on 2011, this video should still be of use. As always, please feel free to call or email the team here at Adaptable Solutions with any of your CRM questions. Happy CRMing, everyone.